Okay, I'm not singing that. Okay, I'm not singing that. Okay, I'm not singing that. The bunny hop at Easter time, I can remember going up and down the hallways throughout North Anvil. It's a big square, uh, doing the bunny hop, the whole school doing that. Mrs. McFeeders, I couldn't find the bathroom. I, I told her I lost myself. One morning, the day before Thanksgiving, Mrs. Wenzel was reading a story about Thanksgiving, and the children no more than got up from the floor from the story, and they look out the window, and a deer was at their window, so it fit the time. And for uh, many, many years, my dad called me, a, he called it the consolidated school rather than the North Amber Township. We had ducks that laid eggs in the courtyard. They have provided great facilities for us here at, at in the Anvil Cleona School District and we're very happy that we're able to educate children in such beautiful buildings and we still have space to grow here at Cleona so we're not going to be strapped for, for space in any time in the future here for our younger students. I was the principal at North Anvil for six years before the building closed and at that point I was the principal between North Anvil and Cleona. Um, some of the favorite memories of, of being at North Anvil are some of the celebrations we had between students and staff such as the autumn antics. Mrs. Workman Smith always organized that for us. We had great activities with that. My name is Craig Meyer and I lived most of my life in North Anvil Township. I graduated from Anvil Cleona High School in 1974. I grew up on a farm just a few, about a half a mile, quarter of a mile away from the North Anvil Township School Building. My dad was a teacher there for 40 years and from my first grade until my fifth grade he and I walked to school and back again. And so I was familiar with the old North Anvil School uh, Township Building and always had an interest in history, um, a local history. So several years ago I started a Facebook page called North Anvil Township History and Happenings and post pictures of the area um, from schools to old churches and reminiscing about the area. So that is how I got involved in uh, the uh, interest in North Anvil. I think what I miss the most are the people. I mean, a, a building is a building. Um, the school is made up of the people that are there, the, the children, the families, the staff members. So it's not so much the building that is missed, it's, it's the people. Um, I was lucky to bring a second grade team over here with me, so I don't miss those people. They're, I'm working with them still. The third grade team went to Anvil, and so those teachers um, I, I don't get to work with nearly as closely as I did in the past. Favorite memory of North Anvil is when the squirrels got into the ceiling and were scampering around and Lynn Kosh, our custodian at the time, went into the computer lab and moved ceiling tiles out of the way and they dropped down into the computer lab and we had those big old iMac computers and they were hopping like leapfrog from one computer to the next until she finally, I don't know, somehow she got the windows open and the screens out of the way and um, chased them out the window. At the North Anvil School, my dad came in to eat lunch with me one time and him and Josh Custer started throwing peas at each other and it started a food fight and we had to sit on quiet time for the rest of the lunch. The North Anvil School building had usually two grades, uh, two classrooms for each grade, one through sixth. Now sometimes that changed depending upon how many uh, children, how many students were in each class. So some years there may be only one uh, one classroom per grade. Um, for example, in my sixth grade class, I actually went to the Anvil School building. Even though there was one sixth grade class at the North Anvil School building, uh, there was an overflow and how they evened it out was actually to, uh, to bus us into the Anvil School building. Um, a number of years ago, there was a movement to move the schools so rather than the 
Cleona, the Anvil, and the North Anvil Township, each having kindergarten through sixth grade, um, there was a movement to get a consolidation again where the different grades from the early grades would be in one building, the middle would be in the next, and the upper elementary would be in another building. My position's pretty much the same here as it was at North Anvil, other than I don't have two buildings that I'm going back and forth uh, being the principal of. So in some ways that made it easier to not have to travel, but it also helped me to be able to concentrate more on the students that were in the building and be able to direct things a little more um, efficiently. In elementary school, I didn't like recess, so I actually stayed inside during break to work on extra projects. So I did research and I read my high school musical magazines. Abby Balsbach and I taught our classmates like stuff about the Indians and Squanto, lots about Squanto. So it wasn't feeling so good in the morning and my mom sent me to school and I was having really weird pains and then we were lining up to go to recess and I almost threw up on Gabby and then we went outside, went on the tire swing and messed around on there and then got sick again and went home and found out I actually had an appendicitis during school, so. In third grade, basically what happened was that it was recess time, right? And I was with my buddy, Ashley Clark, and we were going to the tire swing and Jesse Keller was swinging it and Ashley pushed me in front of it and next thing you know that tire swing hit my head because it, it was like flying everywhere. And then I flung back and I hit my head and got a concussion. Well, I was in second grade and I was in the computer lab with Mrs. McFeeders and I put my hand up and I said, hey Mrs. McFeeders, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, sure, just sign out, so. Long story short, I didn't go to the bathroom. Um, I walked around the school for a little bit. Uh, I actually locked myself in the courtyard. Thank God uh, Jeremy Kessler was walking by the door and he let me in so I didn't get in trouble for that. But about 30 minutes later, I hear my name over the loudspeaker and I make my way to the gymnasium where Mrs. Daig finds me shooting basketball in the gym. And I get back to the computer lab and I'm like, Mrs. McFeeders, I couldn't find the bathroom. I, I told her I lost myself. When I found out that the school building was going to close, it was kind of a sense of relief because it had been rumored for a couple of years that this may be what was going to, to happen. And the other thing is you kind of knew it was coming because our enrollment was steadily declining and we no longer needed as many spaces uh, for classrooms as we had in the past. I am sad to see that uh, since it was sold and it's no longer part of that, obviously um, I, I was instrumental in being very vocal against the, the clustering of the schools because I thought the neighborhood school should have a uh, neighborhood should have a school close to them. It should include as many grades as possible. Um, obviously personally I have a lot of uh, memories there as well uh, from me going to school and my dad teaching there. So kind of sad to see that leaving our, uh, our, our jurisdiction of the uh, the Anvil Cleana School District. Hi, I'm Sharon Workman Smith. I was third grade at North Anvil, and one of my favorite memories is having th Thanksgiving dinner with the whole school. I love doing skits and things like that, so I used to do Thanksgiving at the Tapletons, and part of my kids would read the story, do the words, and the other half of my class would actually act it out, and that was one of my favorite times. One of my favorite memories of North Anvil Elementary School was when um, the principal who was there at the time, and I'll keep her name uh, nameless, uh, she invited all the students to come uh, to the courtyard after, uh, in between our uh, lunch periods. 
and we actually uh, walked into the courtyard and it was a beautiful sunny day and yet it was raining and it was because she was standing on top of the roof with a hose watering all of the students as they came through. It was a pretty warm hot spring day but that's one of my favorite memories. Somewhere in the 90s there was additions made so that there was a whole nother wing that was added on. Um, and they also uh, added a, a big playground with uh, playground equipment. I know that when, my, uh, when I was younger, my mother was on the PTO, the Parent Teacher Organization, or PTA, I guess they call it Parent Te Te Teacher Association. They raised money to have a, um, to put a playground equipment onto the playground, and they raised this money. Um, the school board actually voted it down because it was too dangerous. They didn't want to, and that, uh, that everyone was very disappointed about that. Uh, so many, many, many years later, they actually did put an uh, equipment in there for the kids to play with. So. The different things that I encounter along the way, everyone, I don't know that I can pick one out. I think that um, in researching and talking about the building, I think the most fun that I've had is connecting with uh, some of the former students, some of my classmates, and some of the teachers that had uh, worked here uh, in the building. Um, just ran into uh, someone recently, a uh, uh, Rafina Marquette, who was a teacher back in North Ann for many years, and we reminisced again, and she helped me identify some of the teachers uh, that I couldn't identify in one of the pictures that I had had. My best was after an IST meeting. We had just finished and the parents had just left. I look out in the window and walking between the, the swings and the sliding board and the climber were about 18 cows and they were just wandering around. I told Mr. Traversko quickly and he asked to call the policeman and that quick the cows took off down over the hill. Little did I know where those cows went until Monday night and I went to my daughter's brownie troop. I saw one of our bus drivers, and the bus driver said to me, did you see you had cows in the playground? I said, yes, I did, but they disappeared. She said, well, she knew whose cows they were, and she was coming home with the kindergarten bus, turned the kindergarten bus sideways a little bit off the side of the road, and herded the cows up over the hill so they could go home. I remember the uh, plays that we had. We had a number of plays there on the, on the stage. Um, I, I knew every every area of that. We had uh, I played trombone, uh, and uh, Bill Lemon was my uh, uh, instrumental school teacher there, music teacher, and we uh, practiced in a closet, one of the side closets there, and we had a uh, he he taught me how to to play uh, the instrument with a mouthpiece. I, he said, "Put imagine you have two toothpicks at the side of your mouth, but I can see the room now um, where we practiced in that closet. Hi, I'm Mr. Mary. It's been many years since North Danville days, but I have a lot of great memories. A lot of the memories are more funny and humorous and maybe even mischievous. Uh, one that comes to mind is one day when Mr. Paul, he was an avid hunter, he had been out in the woods and he had located a large uh, bee's nest and he thought it was pretty neat. So he decided he'd bring it into his second grade classroom. Well, it was winter time at the time, or cold out anyways, and when the, the nest warmed up to the climate, the students walked in one day and the room was full of yellow jackets. Uh, uh, Bill Fosnott, who was the uh, custodian, and he would always uh, take care of us and make sure that the building was clean. But one of his jobs also was to sell the cafeteria, the meal tickets. So on a Monday, we would come into the school building, unload from the bus or walk in as I did. And he would be there with his big roll of tickets and he would sell the tickets that we would have. Hi, I'm Beth Luce. I taught third grade for all my years at North Anvil. Uh, I think the thing I loved the most about North Anvil was the playground. Um, every year when we would do the broad jump during field day, I had a speech that I had to give about when the kids did the distance run and they'd have to walk down to the lollipop tree and across the woods and run back to the cheese. And the kids all knew exactly what I meant. The uh, cafeteria, I think for a portion of the time, they actually cooked the meals there right at the building. Um, later then they had the, the food uh, delivered, mm -hmm. but they did make all their own food there in the, in the beginning. 
And for some reason, I remember this sticks with me that I remember on the cafeteria tables uh, periodically, there would be bowls of olives. There would be bowls of green olives and bowls of black olives. Now, no one liked the black olives except me and I think one other person, and we ate the uh, black olives. But why there were bowls of olives periodically on the tables when we had our lunches, I have no idea, but I do remember that. <laughs> Um, I remember every every day at North Anvil, I, we were always excited to go to recess because North Anvil was the only school that had a that had a tire swing in the playground. And like every time when we went out for recess, everybody just ran straight to the tire swing. There was like a really long line. It like sometimes you could wait for like 15 minutes just to be just to get on there you sometimes it could just take the whole recess to get on there like first grade and we had like this little closet that we had to get like our stuff out of. we kept our backpacks in it and I went to get my lunch money out of my bag and I was like over on my knees and somebody came up behind me and tripped and their knee went into like the back of my head my two front teeth which were like 10 times bigger than they already are now went through my bottom lip and my whole mouth was filled with blood and I tried to go to lunch so I just sat there with my head down because I didn't want anybody to see me crying with blood coming out of my mouth. And a, um, a cafeteria lady came up to me and she asked if I was okay. And I was like, I just shook my head because I didn't want to talk. And so she goes, do you need to go down to the nurse? So I went down to the nurse and she goes, what's wrong? And I opened my mouth to tell her and just all this blood just started coming out of my mouth. And she didn't realize what was wrong because I just kept crying and I wouldn't actually tell her. She just washed my mouth out with like salt water, which was really gross. And then I told her, and she goes, well, you're a trooper. Thank you, North Anvil. It's been a, uh, a pleasure sharing some memories and uh, living most of my life in the North Anvil Township and having the experience of being educated at the North Anvil Township building with uh, some wonderful teachers and staff. So thank you. If I could describe the North Anvil building in one word, I think it would be community. Um, like I said before, a building is not anything in and of itself. It's the people that make it come alive. And we really had a, a strong sense of community in that, in that building, especially when we had grades two and three, because every child that was in second grade, every child in third grade went to the same building, and they really got to know each other well. Thank you, North Anvil. I had a great time out there. That's my fondest memory of North Anvil. North Anvil was so much fun. Um, thank you, North Anvil. Thank you, North Anvil. North Anvil was great times and, more importantly, great people. Thank you. Thank you, North Anvil. 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 Thank you, North Anvil.